Hello, everyone, and welcome to day number seven. A special mm. thank you for all your comments on YouTube, Facebook, also on Instagram. We appreciate your participation. Today, we're going to talk about three tips that St. Alphonsus gives regarding fasting, and Janelle has two, two things. things. <laughs> <laughs> and before we get into the three tips and the two things, special thank you to our Patreon team who's allowing us mm. to do these videos. If you've been following us for a while, you know that Janelle and I are not theologians, we're not philosophers, we're just normal people trying to grow in relationship with Jesus and help other people do the same. Mm -hmm. We want to help people grow in holiness. We're not claiming holiness for ourselves. We're, we're pilgrims on a journey. But our Patreon team are people who've partnered with us, who financially support us on a monthly basis that allow us to do these videos. If you would consider that, we'd be very honored and very grateful uh, because we can't go forward without expanding our Patreon team. So thank you for that consideration. If you're interested, there'll be a link right up there, also in the description. And if you got this on an email list, then a link will be in the email. Okay. What are the two things, or a couple things? Well, first off, I just have to say that I love how he always refers to Our Lady and the whole idea of having her as our adv advocate because she will be there to defend us. Mm. You know, mm. that gives me hope. I don't want to say security, but it's sort of like some security in knowing that I have a mother who will who will advocate for me mm. on my behalf. I've noticed that there's a pattern. He always talks about her every single day. The other thing is this quote. I do not absolutely say that after another sin, there will be no more pardon for you because this I know not, but I say that it may happen. This just makes me kind of laugh uh, <laughs> because I just think it's, you know, we don't know for sure. It could be that there might be no more pardon. And, and what if we're on our last sin, you know? Like, what if this is the one that tips me over the scale? So, but at the same time, he kind of gives you a little bit of hope. Like, maybe it's not, maybe it is. So. I, want, I wonder if St. Alphonsus would have read it so kindly as you did. <laughs> <laughs> With the same kind of sweet tone. <laughs> I do want to emphasize, friends, that mercy is always available to mm -hmm. us. I mean, we should never, ever despair. St. Yes. Alphonsus is just pushing us to repentance. Yes, okay? and... And I think, and he will continue to open this up to us as the days proceed. Okay, the second thing that I wanted to mention is from St. Philip Neri, and this is what he says. Where there is a common table, says St. Philip, all should eat of what is served up. Why does that send out to you? <laughs> it sends out to me because I feel like there should be no complaints around my supper table. <laughs> So this is an examination of our, my <laughs> conscience and our children, maybe. No, no, it's not. You know, I just don't really have a memory, too many memories of really complaining of my mom's food. You know, mm. I just ate what was placed before me. So what stood out to me is his thoughts on fasting. I assert that whoever is attached to the pleasure of the table or does not seriously attend to the mortification of the appetite will never make any considerable progress in perfection. They who neglect the mortification of the taste will daily commit a thousand faults. Let us now come to the practice of denying the appetite. In what is it to be mortified? St. Bonaventure answers, in the quality, the quantity, and the manner. Quality, quantity, and manner. So quality, what does that mean? I think it goes back to what Janelle said, just as simply accepting what is before us. So questions to consider when we are mortifying the appetite. Can we simply accept a meal that maybe is too cold? It needs to be a little bit warm. Can we just accept it? Or it needs extra salt, but we're just going to leave it and say, no, I'm not going to salt my food. Or maybe it's the butter. We want more butter on it, but we will accept it as it is. Or maybe the favorite condiment is across the table. Can we just let it go and accept the meal as it is presented to ourselves? Mm -hmm. That's quality. Quantity, that means how much food we're taking in. So we can mortify our palate this way by simply eating just enough, not in excess where we're absolutely stuffed, but not also so much where we're satisfied, where we leave the table just a little bit hungry. And that takes a lot of self-control because most of us, mm -hmm. we bring ourselves to the point of either satisfying our hunger or being stuffed. It takes way more self-control just to bring us up to the point where we just want a little bit more food. And it's also a secret way to fast, which leads us to the third thing, manner. Manner is the outward visible expression of our fast or our mortification. So if we are eating at a table common with others mm -hmm. and we just take enough food where we don't aren't quite satisfied, 
no one's going to know. Mm-hmm. So it's secret. And that is kind of the best way to fast where other people don't know. So we got mm. quality, quantity, and manner. Great advice when considering how to fast. So I think that's it. That was great. Thank oh. you. Okay. If you want to pray along the rosary with us, link is going to be right up there. If you're blessed by this video, please share. God bless you guys.